Tuklo, and this is based in the 1800s, was based in real life story of the Light Horsemen. Now, the Light Horsemen were made after criminals would go into native lands to do ransacking and the words I can't say in YouTube because they will strike me. But they made their own police force. The the every other tribe around the nations in the northwest and southwest to govern themselves, control alcohol, make sure people were doing the right things, make sure no one was getting hurt and everything else. Now we get to Tuklo, who is the daughter of a light horseman. Her, that that's her father, and she wants to be like her father. She has a force unlike her own. Nice little Easter egg that we both saw during mm -hmm. the eighteen hundreds. They made it black and white. Obviously, they made it more cinematic style. While every time they were talking, the father would talk and there would be a sun symbol in the top, right? Then when Tuplo would talk, there would be a sap sucker, the hummingbird. There, not the, I think it was like, no, the, the, the woodpecker. Woodpecker. There too. So we kind of, because in every episode, there's always a woodpecker. In the second episode, there was a woodpecker mm -hmm. during the time that she was doing the stick thing. It came out of nowhere and then left real freaking quick. In this one, the woodpecker is a representation of the symbol in the in the in the audio text, which is fine. I like that. That's a nice little nice little thing. She tells her, "You can never be a light horseman. Women are here to protect, while we defend." And she tells him, "How like how can I ever love something if I can't protect it?" She goes to a river that's a real river near Kansas, near the Choctaw Reserve, and she sits there and reflects. As as my girlfriend and wonderful co-host brought up. She senses something and she looks up into the sky as this is happening. They, the, the father and a group are going checking some criminals and they found out it's a trap and they're getting shot down by the enemies. Tukla being on a horse, mind you, gets her ass all the way over there to her father and with in Hawkeye accuracy, if not bullseye accuracy, we'll understand why I bring that word up later. Knocks out all the guys. Boom, boom, boom. But before that, she braided her hair because all the Choctaw warriors would braid their hair to represent warriors. She did all that, and she was happy. My Easter egg for you, and if you if you remember the episode, and you remember this too, mm -hmm. her eyes are as black as night. You can't see anything. And that, and then we saw a picture of her in color, and you can barely see her eyes too. So before we continue. What are your thoughts on the history of the Light Horseman and the origin of Tukla? Of Tukla, sorry. Yeah, I, I enjoy that there, especially when he said women women give life, men takes. So yeah. it, it it's it it come that those exact same phrase talks it talks about it later. We're gonna talk about that later in the episode. That was an important phrase, an important um lesson that Tukla got from her father. Or, or their beliefs of, of their of their customs. I love the act when you braid your hair, you're a warrior, bringing into that light, and and they serving a purpose. I like that she connected with the with the earth when she was when she heard, heard the bird and got into that zone. Like you said, the eyes blacked out because she got connected, knowing the sign of danger. She went to help, and and she just that black. It, it symbols us um like when you black out. And you focus on something like, like you said earlier in that episode prior, when they were playing that lacrosse game, that she zoned out, she focused, like you said, had a Jordan moment, and she she seen and she that's a, another reference of zoning out and focusing on the big task at hand. And her was to save her father, save her from from the danger or her or her people at that time from that danger on those on those valiants going out there and setting that trap. So it showed that there. I like that part there, and also. Talking about you know the little bit of it's not exactly accurate, but the history there was there was vigilanteism back then yeah. showing that there. So I I appreciated that that setup there for the opening sequence of this episode. Yeah. Thoughts? Yeah, I will say I really liked the significance of Tuklo braiding her hair, knowing that it was something that only the men were allowed to do at that time, and she chose to do that and i actually like thinking about it now i think it really kind of intertwines with the theme of the you know echo and everything and how her ancestry is kind of woven together in that way um and then also it's really cool you mentioned like them being warriors and getting into that state and like it it's kind of kind of like a flow state you know like when you're in that fighting and you just it's like uh, autonomous 
and ultra ultra instinct. instinct yeah. yeah 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 so I like yes that. my girl watches anime it's yes amazing, he has me watch that now. <laughs> yeah. now the get off two little side things scully scully uh chula visits scully's in the pawn shop asked about you know uh did maya come over here and that's that's after he fixed the the leg thing he gave him a nice little golden thing that had the symbol of the choctaw people on on the front it was very beautiful um scully tells maya and it's and, and you can see like they broke up for a long period of time probably after taloa died so mm -hmm. he's horny and she's like i don't want none of that i don't want you humping my leg verbatim so he's like he tells her look why don't you just talk to maya like all you ever do is talk how about you just listen and just actually just listen to her and listen to what she has to say and you know oh you're just a holy dog like look she just no she didn't say anything she just got up and stormed off she's like yes oh, okay Maya in her room has a has a sudden vision of Chaffa, Loak, and Tuklo and a little bit of another one, mm -hmm. right? But then at the same time, while this vision is happening, there is a, a woodpecker, a, a sapsucker passing by. So it's 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 like her own version of Spidey Sense, mm -hmm. which I do mm -hmm. love that. Like mm -hmm. bah, 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 something bad is happening to you or someone that you love. So you need to get out of here. That's a nice little Spider-Man thing. At the same time, it happened. She got kidnapped. Got mm -hmm. got um, you know, everything else, mm -hmm. and, and and everything is happening. Vicky ensures someone that she's here. Come to Oklahoma. Come pick it up. In comes Zane, and we find out that Zane's part of the Black Knights Club, which comic book wise is Bullseye's Club. Again, that is that is comic book accurate. So let's just go off that bullseye character from Daredevil, bullseye a, a character well connected with Punisher. So let's mm -hmm. just really play play around with that, ladies and gentlemen. He comes in, Zane's like, "Okay, where's the girl? All oh, the girls locked up. They locked her up with two girls." And I did like the little thing there that Z uh, Vicky and the the skinny girl had a same kitty cat tattoo. I don't know if that's connected in any way, but yeah. either way. The other one who I guess clearly didn't remember that she's deaf kept on like, can you hear me? You're like, no, she can't hear you. She's deaf. Like, what, what's wrong with you? Zane tells Vicky, we don't have the money on me right now, but if you show us the person, we'll give it to you, which is a smart villain tactic. You just don't go to a meeting with the money. Like, if the thing is there, I will get the money and I will mm -hmm. give it to you. But I want to see the goods first. There is some honor among thieves. Vicky thinks he's in control. Tells tells the tells go get Maya but that's that's nothing altogether Uncle Henry's there lot like tied up Bonnie tries to go to the front door gets it there ah it's locked goes around the back goes to Uncle Henry they see that someone's coming in so they 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 um, they unlock Uncle Henry Uncle Henry tells Bonnie oh everything's fine but at the same time is sign languaging get out of here now she sees that doesn't question like a smart person. All right, I'm out of here and just get the hell out. But she gets picked up too. She gets thrown in. Maya gets a nice little flabbergasted face. We get to see Bonnie and Maya, right? Bonnie can't really talk to Maya because Maya doesn't read lips as well. And I get that. That happens. We go a little bit more. Vicky is freaking out because he's like, where's my money? He's like, we're not giving you the wicked money. And at that time, Maya sign languages, sign languages, freaking Bonnie. I'm gonna punch you in the face, and we are arguing with that because that was like, I'm gonna punch you in the face. Like, wait, yeah. wait, 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 wait. You give me a second to freaking let me process that. Yeah. That happened. No warning. No warning. They get out. Then this is something that was not really explained, but was really cool. <clears throat> Maya basically makes a freaking rivet gun. Out of parts, never explain how she knew that. Okay, let's go. <laughs> so she made a movie gun, shot the lights, turned it off, but maybe even using the powers of, of Tuklo there because Tuklo is a killer crack shot. The girl comes in, gets shot repeatedly with rivets. And ladies and gentlemen, I've been hit with a rivet. It's not a all-around pain, it's the pain where it hits you and then the curve. So if you get hit in the rib, you're going to feel that pain and a curve. It, it's just tremendous, mind-numbing pain that never goes away. So getting hit with face, boo, 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 and chest, here in the sternum. and sternum, and then get kicked in the face, she's out. Done. Maya sends a picture 
of that woman to Vicky saying, you're next. The girl sees it, her, her his accomplice. Uh, I think I have something to do in the parking lot. I'm going to and she gets the hell out of here. They said, you know, let her go. She's, she, she knows what's up. Vicky's like, well, you know, we, we kind of confirmed that she's here. Can I get the money? You know, let's take it out. Like, And now I did love the, the thing that said Zane's like, well, we're going to take him out. Let's take him out. And he jumps over the railing and gets shot multiple times. His head's upside down. Looks like something out of out of the forest. R.I.P. Vicky. Should have been should have been with, with Thanos and should have been with Zemo. He would have survived. What are your thoughts on that at, as a whole, Cardala? Up to that point of Vicky's death, R.I.P. Vicky. Um, I will say I like that, you know, in the beginning of the episode when Echo or uh, when Maya is like standing at the lake and then she starts feeling that kind of spidey sense mm -hmm. and her ancestors are like screaming at her like, hey, something's about to happen. Um, and then I like the part where when after Bonnie gets captured, which like she was she was good at catching on, but she wasn't subtle enough that no. like the 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 one girl like noticed. Yeah. So like if she had been a Thank little you. bit more swamped, yeah, yeah, yeah. he might have gotten away the with it. The skinny one noticed it like and then immediately followed her down. Yeah. And then Bonnie didn't even try to wait. <laughs> she just like was like, oh let's go. And yeah. So that didn't work out. But I like the part where Bonnie's like thrown into the closet and she like turns around all pissed off, probably trying to like find something to get herself out. Yeah. And she sees Maya and her face just like drops. So I like that part a lot. That's true. Your thoughts, Kevin? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's that part where you said the warning was, you know, she hasn't interpreted yet. She's getting the signs of, of the woodpecker coming out like a, it's a, like a spidey sense, a warning, yeah. seeing the visions, still don't know what, why she's getting visions of, of these and sexual insect. I, I got tongue tied. Her ancestors <laughs> there at the moment. And she didn't. She didn't notice that. She's and uh, that's slowly but surely gonna evolve in her to wake something up. We already know that she's got some type of homing issue where, oh, where she could. She's focused. She could, like you said, bullseye. Like she could go in there and she's an assassin. Focus on shooting with the rivet gun. She's because she was trained already. We know that prior in the Hawkeye series, how she is a hell of a shot. She knows how she's a good markswoman, and she was shooting and with a rivet gun. They're like, whoa, she really. She did some MacGyver stuff in that in that episode there. You know, she just made up up there. And then I like when she signed her and she's gonna punch her cousin in the face and just went whack. You know, just punched her like why you you know, kind of like what the hell you why did you come here? That was to me, I felt like that. I said, Porque te veniste a presentar. Why are you nosy here? You should have stayed stayed over there, over there. So you you got it. So also for for those other two, especially that lady, I think that woman, there's gonna be something later down, the skinny lady that left. I think there's gonna yeah. be something with her later down the road because for her to just leave like that, and you said whatever that tattoo is, probably is for a gang or a member, like we said, where the other guy was from the Bullseye Club, where yeah. maybe she's in another rival or another another villain that they're going to introduce later down the road. So that's always Easter eggs to be continued. Um, Vicky got what he deserved. He got shot. He got done. Por, por yeah. Chota. There you go. You bought now. You messed up. Also, you're gonna mess up that nice skating ring and and all the other yeah. stuff that comes with it. You deserve it. You deserve yeah. it. That's true. We continue on a little bit more where Echo does get away, and Echo is still going through the laser team. Henry, which I do love this little thing here too, where Henry is like, "Look, I got nothing to do with this. Like, but let's give it the hell out of here." But at certain point, after Vicky got murdered. And they focused on his face, which I did love that little, very Netflix. Um, then Dragula by Rob B Zombie song came on. And then mm -hmm. my, I did like the, 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 the when this is the, I wish I had a reaction to this. When she heard that, she's like, oh, cool. When I heard that, I'm like, oh, shit. I looked at you. And I was like, yeah, that. shit's about to go down. And I did <laughs> love that. They took, they took Henry to the electrical box. They and he, he and Maya had, had already booby trapped that. And I did like the little detail that when he opened the box, Henry and I noticed that again. Henry looked at the box, looked at it for a second, and then looked at the guy who was about to touch it. I'm like, oh, and they, they told her, don't do that because he knew that she was, was booby trapped. Mm. Boom. And then the fight started. I did not know my girlfriend reminded me that he she, that Echo has a knife in her boot, so that's why certain attacks are very bloody. And there was blood on the ball. There's blood on the floor. Mm. Now, here's a nice little fight, too. He, she came through the Keep America Skate Again sign. Mm. And, you, and yeah. we both saw this. Slid 
and then then grabbed the guy's head and smacked it on the floor, which made blood come out. We did see that. Two little wonderful things, and you you said that too. The guy's on the freaking uh, on the ice rink table thing, and he gets kicked. I don't know why you're doing up there for no. Yeah, why are you doing over there? She gets manhandled onto a pinball machine. Does a nice little leg, does a nice little leg uh, triangle on the guy, gets out of it, and does one of the most. And I'm gonna say, this, people in the wrestling should know this: the most perk angle, German suplex, yes, high angle I've ever seen in my fucking life. And if people know who perk angle is, you know yeah. who the hell I'm talking about. Oh yeah. Okay, we continue on. Nice little fight in there, and everything else, but at the end, they get caught. They get stopped. Zane is pissed the fuck off. He's like, all right, I'm just going to kill you. I'm going to kill him. And at the moment, she's, he's about to kill Maya. Yeah. In, in a New York minute, everything can change. He's like, um, uh, uh, uh hello? Um, uh, yeah, 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 I'm right here with the, but, um, but, uh, and you see him like machinating his head, like, all right, let's get out of here. Let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. And I, I and I'm like, that, okay, so we both thought, who the hell was that? But we get to that in a second. Henry's like, we barely survived this. Like, ah, oh, someone must have called and called out. Who the hell do you think it was? While he's like, get the hell out of here. You're going to murder more people. Leave, Maya. Maya goes back to, the, to, to her cabin, to her house. And who comes out of the shadow? But fucking Kingpin with a freaking eye patch. And she is shocked. And she is shocked and she's just. PTSD. Kevin, your thoughts on the episode at the end? Yeah, I thought he was. I, is he? She's hallucinating because remember she's seen visions of her ancestors. So I, I so I don't know if that was for real, or was yeah. that you know, at, you know, at real time, or or just her hallucinating, thinking that's you know, Kingpin coming out. I'm like, is that real there? And they just stand there, that classic epic cliffhanger of them standing and facing each other, and then but when when make me think no because for him to just not kill them. And he gets the New York call and stop. Only a person with that kind of power, like a kingpin, will make a from from you know stopping you from getting killed after all that trouble that she put you through. And you and he's gonna say no, don't do nothing. I was like, oh yeah, this is real. At the, you know when when that episode finished, I was like, before the new one started, I was like, damn, is that real? Is that her thinking or hallucinating? But I don't know. Only only him with that power could stop it. And I love the fighting scene, like you said. The, the the pinball with the Kirk Angle German suplex phenomenal job. It was a the high fighting. angle. Oh my god! I had to tell my girlfriend like, there's two types of German suplexes. There's a German suplexes where you get them like on their shoulder, and there's a high angle one where the neck yes. is just destroyed. Well, yeah. The, yeah. The Go best on. part is that like, bef- prior to like this scene in this episode, he was saying like, oh, I don't really know if I like her character, like. You know, mm. you were kind of saying like she's kind of bratty, little, yeah, she's like, kind of bratty. whatever. She like all of this, and then once she did that, it was like, oh, you know, I like. Her. I like once her. they played that plus the Rob Zombie song, like yeah, yeah. That, that, that helped a lot. That helped a lot. That that really it set up. I mean, it, it touched the emotional aspect of the of a fighting scene. You know, like if you were to if you were to ask yourself if I really want to get get it going down, and I'm putting on the headphones or Walkman, you that's one of the songs you want to put on your track list. Yeah. And you want to go and go kick ass. So I love exactly. that that aspect and it and check the box there. You know, if you if you know I love that part. I also enjoyed the uncle. Like he, you know, he's like, I didn't want this come to come to blows to my town, but I'm in it now. Let's go. You know what? Yeah, and and then for Maya, Maya was gonna go. You know what? I'm gonna leave because they let me go here. They gave me a second chance. I just leave, let me leave town. I already caused enough trouble. I'm, I was asking myself, who's gonna hell? Who the hell's gonna pay for the damn repairs now in the damn uh, skating nope. ring? Uh, there's a nice that, little thing here. There's a nice little. I, uh, I forgot to say this. Thank you. For, thank, sorry about it, Kevin. Um, huh? There's a nice little thing here as well. When the episode started, Uncle Henry's crew. He's it is in charge with fist shipping as well. He said, yes. Look, I'll, well, I'll, I'll take the I'll take the hit from this. You guys are not gonna get in trouble. We did this everything by the book. We did not know this was gonna happen. I'll take the hit. So he knew, and his crew knew at the same time. Like, yo, we're doing illegal things, and something illegal just happened, and something like, are we gonna die? No, you're good. You're good. So I love that Uncle Henry, in his own world, is an underboss mm-hmm. for Fisk, at least in, in Oklahoma. At right. least at that point, kept everything good. We continue on. 